This is where things start getting really weird. This video is like midway through a discussion in our Airbnb talking about social issues in Cuba and we get a page. Now, at the time that we were filming, we didn't know what this pager was. It was just a beeping sound. But looking back on it now, that was somebody buzzing from down below to try to get us to let them into the apartment. After that person paged our apartment twice, random things started to happen and it freaked us out so much. Like I said before, we were getting monitored, definitely. We all got the feeling that there were video cameras in our apartment and also sound devices to hear what we were saying. Later in the night, we also received phone calls. So somebody was calling our apartment and when we picked up the phone, they would immediately hang up. There's other things that happened in Cuba that also validified that reasoning. And it wasn't just me who thought it. I talked to Carlos about this too and he thought that we were also getting monitored. Yes, it seems absurd if you just have always lived in a free country like the United States. But the reality is this is kind of the norm or not out of the ordinary for a government like Cuba to spy on its citizens or to spy on tourists. A few things about this video that I want to clarify. I mentioned about Cuba's great healthcare system. They do have a good healthcare system. I say that if I had cancer, I would go to Cuba over going to the US. Obviously that's not true. I would definitely seek treatment first in the US. I'm, I was just saying if I had a rare disease that I could not be cured in the US, I would for sure go to Cuba as my second option because they do have a great pharmaceutical industry. That is undeniable. Also, I said that the Cuban pharmaceutical industry uh, is exponentially better than the US. Also, that's not true. I was exaggerating. They're pretty much on par with each other, but Cuba does have an advantage over the United States where they can push drugs out at a faster rate than the US because of the FDA. And I'm not knocking the FDA. I think the FDA is needed and is a great government regulatory agency. There are issues when it takes so long for a drug to get pushed out into the open market. Cuba doesn't have that. Cuba doesn't have a regulatory agency like the FDA that closely monitors drugs and that is very stringent with the process. They're able to push drugs out a lot faster than the US and that inherently gives them an advantage. If Cuba were to open up their economy, they would be probably the leader in pharmaceutical output. They are very, very self-sufficient and they have a very, very educated population. For me, we were talking about this before, right? I think everything comes down to a person's risk tolerance is are they willing to take that risk? You do certain things in your life because of the amount of risk you're willing to take. Whether you know it, like it's, it's unconscious, but like if you're not willing to take the risk, you're not gonna do something. If you take the risk, you're going to. So I, I think it comes down to personality and like everybody's different, of course. The issue with that question that I just asked is like someone may want to be homeless in the United States but they're just, their personality doesn't allow them to. You know what I mean? So it's like, they would answer yes, but if it actually came down to it, they would say no. For me, based on my risk tolerance, obviously like, I know you. I would, I would, I would, I would, yeah, I would, I would do it. Bro, we're in Cuba, right? Yeah, we, <laughs> it's crazy for me seeing this that, I mean, in order for you to actually reach your maximum potential here, it's like you have to break the law. Because if you don't, you're never gonna be able to expand. That thing that you've just said, like it gets to me because that's the exact, even though Mexico is way more privileged than Cuba, that thing you said applies to Mexico 100%. Sure. In Mexico, if you want to reach your highest potential, you need to cheat, you need to be corrupt, you need to fucking bribe. And that's, that's fucking awful. That's why many people want to leave Cuba and that's why many people want to fucking leave Mexico. Let's say you want to become a doctor, right? Mm -hmm. But a doctor makes the same amount as a person who collects trash. And I'm not, I'm not knocking anything against garbage collectors. The skill level, right? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't compare. And the pressure. Right? And the pressure and the time invested, right? Yes. So it's like... And the risk. And, and the, the risk. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, naturally, even if you want to become a doctor, you're going to think to yourself, why am I going to spend time and invest myself in this, 
career path mm -hmm. when I'm going to be making the same or maybe a little bit more than a guy who doesn't need the amount of education that I'm getting. Right. So it's like, why do that? And the, the thing is, it limits the amount of potential that you could reach to not only like help your economy, mm -hmm. um, help people around you, but expand your own intellectual capacity. So I was going to say, do you think like a system like this, it's almost like a brain drain, right? So it's like, does a system like this cause a brain drain? And I don't know because Cuba has one of the best healthcare programs in the world. I mean, like they're a biopharmaceutical juggernaut. They exponentially, and I mean like exponentially, past the US in their drug capabilities. They've come up with influenza vaccines. I mean, their, their cancer drugs are just like, if I ever got cancer, I would come to Cuba. We have the FDA, of course. The thing with the FDA is it takes probably 10 years for a drug to actually reach market. That's too long. I mean, you can't wait around for a drug that might save your life. And the, the regulation is so stringent. You could have a, a drug that has the potential to save millions of people's of lives, right. millions of people's lives. But if your death ratio in your clinical trials doesn't meet the standard that's set by the FDA, you'll have to go back and start the process all over again. And I mean, it, it just takes way too long. Economics taught me that if you don't incentivize people through uh, monetary gain and i'm not saying that you do everything because of money but i mean to at least meet basic necessities right and live a comfortable lifestyle then people are going to take the easier route and making decisions and and choosing career paths but it's like i don't know if that applies to cuba because their healthcare system is so good their educational system is so good so i just wanted to get y'all's thoughts on that so Jacob, what are you thinking? Does a system like this cause a brain drain? You know what I mean? Like, does it decrease the intellectual capacity of the people living here? Mm -hmm. I guess it's kind of hard because I have no clue. Like from, from like the perspective of being like in a system like this, I guess I would have no clue. But like looking at it from, if I was in the US and they automatically like assigned me a career path. Right, right, if, it, if like, it was you, if it was your life. If it was me, yeah, like let's just say, you know, I love doing film and advertising and photography and that kind of stuff. And if somebody told me you can't do any of that, you are gonna be a school janitor for the rest of your life. Like that's your job, like you're gonna clean the locker rooms at a school. Like that would just completely like crush my mindset, like in my motivation. What if someone didn't tell you that you had to do it? What if it was like, okay, I can... What was that? The camera that stopped recording. Oh, did it? No. Oh. I don't know what that was. And then there's a C4 to bridge to it. I don't know what that was. Oh my goodness. Oh, is my memory low? I bet that's what it is. I don't know. That's probably was just like over here. It's not the camera. <laughs> it's, from the, it's from the kitchen. Damn. The yeah. lady cooked. Oh, shit. <laughs> Let's just see if we hear it in there now. It almost, that fucking whole place blows up. Do you think? Stop looking out the window. Okay. Let's try not to get sniped. If there's someone who's right now, I want to try to please let me know. You see my black ass? I'm right. I'm right out of the window. If it was you though, Jacob, like if you didn't have, I mean, if you had, if you go, stop, stop, if, um, <laughs> if, holy shit, working. Oh Yo, what? Okay, we're done filming. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright, just we'll okay. get back to it. If you had freedom of choice to choose what you wanted to, but you didn't have freedom of pay, which means that like you could work as a school janitor and make the same okay. or a little bit less than as like a filmmaker, right? Mm -hmm. Would that still like make you not want to work as a film? Yeah. Maybe? And what if so it would just completely deter you from that? No, 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 no. So like see it's different though, like if I was passionate about being a filmmaker and like the pay was the same as doing something easy like easier than like creating films i would still do film only because i'm passionate about it 
but like, let's say you were born here and you hadn't found a passion yet, like you didn't know you loved to do website design or love to take pictures or something like that. And you knew that no matter what you did, whether you put in all the time to become a surgeon, um, and you'd still get paid around the same as like, you know, somebody who picks up trash, then I probably wouldn't have that motivation and drive to even find like a passion. Gotcha. Like if I knew in the end I would all still be making the same amount of money and it'd be a struggle no matter what, I would take the easier route. Right. But like I already have like a developed like passion mm-hmm. and so I would take that route even though it might be more difficult than something else, only because I was passionate about it. Right, so what you're saying, like, if you, I mean, like, let's say you have no knowledge on filmmaking, but, like, you have this idea that you want to become a filmmaker, but you had, you had, you, like, you still were at the bottom of the learning curve, mm-hmm. so, like, you still have to learn everything that you know now. Would that deter you from learning? The learning curve for film is steep, right? Mm-hmm. But, it, I mean, once you get above um, the steep part, it flats like it flats like with anything. Yeah. Like for something like a school janitor, uh, it would be a lot lower. Yeah. So it would be a lot easier to get over that first mm-hmm. initial curve or that first initial incline. Yeah. So when if you had no knowledge, no experience, what would you do? Still hard to say. Oh, let me. Let's just say instead it was a doctor. Okay. Yeah. Like, because something I'm not passionate no, yeah, about. Yeah, like, sure, I don't, sure. don't exactly. want to be a doctor. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I would choose the easier. Would you? Yeah, okay. for sure. I wouldn't go through all of that to you become wouldn't. a doctor to get paid the same amount as. Okay. What if you had a curiosity? Though? Like, what if you were still curious about it? If I was still curious, probably. You would like, go for it. Yeah, like if I wanted to help people and be a doctor and like that was an interest, I would have enough motivation to drive me to do that. Because okay. I guess if I'm getting paid the same amount no matter what, I would do something I would like, I guess.